are now standing at the Mohammed Mahmoud Street, the very famous graffiti street in Cairo. And uh, this, uh, this uh, drawing behind me is actually a very good example on how the graffiti keeps developing and changing the whole time. Because the first time I saw this graffiti a couple of months ago, uh, we had this uh, brutal, this brutal scene of the soldiers kicking a woman who became famous and known as the the blue bra incident lady. And uh, when the first time I saw uh, this uh, drawing, which uh, I believe is made by the ultras graffiti artist, there were no horns here. Uh, the red horns. They had been added when I came back and saw this drawing a couple of weeks later. They had, they had added the red eyes and the, the horns and the red tail. The, the, the interesting thing here is that there is always... The, it is like the walls, they keep on talking and you can add your own thing to the wall the whole time. Somebody starts and then somebody else will keep on, you know, adding his or her ideas. How did you organize your photo shoots? Because you must have been very quick in order to either catch graffiti that was going to be erased or that was going to be transformed with other layers. I knew, I knew that the, the graffiti was quickly changing. I mean, it was changing by the, uh, the artists themselves or something was added to the graffiti or it could uh, be erased by the authorities. So. What I did was, I regularly, each week, I toured, mostly on Fridays and Saturdays, I, I toured the area. This area here, Mohammed Mahmoud Street, around uh, Tahrir, I had my round. I walked around this area, ended up back in Tahrir Square, checked out the new graffiti uh, that had come up uh, at, uh, on the big Mugama building, uh, the bureaucratic building. And, uh, and then from there, I continued over to uh, Samalek and Doki, and that made a round into Mahdi. Could you tell us a little bit about the different techniques? What is, uh, what is stenciling and is, what is wall painting? The, the beauty of the stencil is that you, you have a stencil, you have cut it out in a carton. For instance, in this case here, you have a Mona Lisa. They have cut out all the pieces that are now yellow. They have been cut out. And then you just take your spray can. And here is, by the way, a spray can. This is the logo for the Mona Lisa Brigade. And, uh, and then you put, just put the piece of cotton on the wall. Somebody can help you hold it. And then another third person to spray. And uh, the spray is what you see here on the black. The beauty of this is that you can easily duplicate the stencil in as many places you want. The artist, he makes the same stencil, but the one who will go out and spray up the stencil, he doesn't need to be an artist, he just, you just give him a spray can and, uh, and his enthusiasm and uh, the work he wants to do as, a, as an activist. So that was stenciling and now let me now talk about uh, the other technique, um, uh, the drawing. Uh, painting of um, painting the walls with your motif and uh, this is an interesting this is actually a very interesting sequel of uh, different uh, profiles of a man with the same or almost the same red brain repeated in each portrait so these are unique portraits it will not be, will not be easily, uh, not be easily replicated on another wall. It's a unique piece. It sits here. This is, this is exactly what is the strength of graffiti. It speaks without words. I mean, there are, of course, uh, people also use words and slogans. But the, the, the essence of graffiti is that to attract the, the, the person who is passing by directly with a strong visual. This, uh, what's happened in Egypt ever since the revolution is a sense that the media, the Egyptian state media, they have been lying from day one of the revolution.
revolution. Well, they were lying before also, of course. But that they didn't tell the truth, they didn't, they, they didn't uh, take the responsibility as reporters, they didn't do any objective reporting during the whole revolution. And then they were forced to change and be more fair in their reporting. But this has, this whole notion of the Egyptian state media is still a sore with the Egyptian public and they don't trust them. And I think the graffiti actually has placed itself in that vacuum. Because what's written on the walls might not always be the truth, but I mean, people know it comes from the heart of people. That somebody's expressing their feelings, their thoughts, their ideas, you can take it or leave it, but nobody's telling you this is, this is the truth. They're saying this is my truth, this is how I feel. And that is how people relate to the graffiti. A lot of people were saying that during the revolution there was a social media revolution, but it seems that there was a, a graffiti revolution that perhaps was even more powerful because ultimately it was on a really public space, like the ultimate public space, the walls of Egypt, and accessible to all. Well, I, I, you, you are right in, in many ways, but I would say that the social revol media revolution had already started before the revolution, actually, uh, with all the different uh, Facebook pages, uh, YouTube postings uh, describing the problems in Egypt. And uh, let's not forget the, the big uh, impact. Uh, the Facebook page of Khaled Saeed had. I mean, it was it was in many ways instrumental to bring uh, people together uh, during the revolution as well. But but with the graffiti, it is. I mean, let, let's be aware that not everybody has a Facebook account or even access to uh, the internet in Egypt, and many people can't read and write. But. But a message like this one, you know, I mean, nobody, everybody can understand it. And um, the street we are staying on, I would say that most Cairo people living, I mean, most uh, Kyrians, most Egyptians living in Cairo, they have actually visited this street after the revolution. So it is a kind of open gallery uh, for views, ideas, dreams and thoughts by the Egyptians giving and they, it's addressing the Egyptian, it's a gift to the Egyptian. See what we have to say. And it's for and, uh, everybody is actually checking out what's going on on the streets. Thank you, Mia.